Just found out about this forum recently. However, the cheating happened to me a few years ago, but the pain and the memories are with me almost daily. Background. I was a 23-year-old male, and my fiancé was 22 when this happened. We were introduced by a mutual friend about six months before we got engaged. Two months after we started dating, her lease was up at her apartment, so she moved into my two-bedroom apartment. Unlike most relationships, we almost never argue and get along well, so I didn't see any problem moving in with her. In fact, I thought it was very beneficial to our relationship as she was really hardworking and covers her own share of the rent without me even asking. She said she loved me and I was the best boyfriend she've ever had. Before me, she had been in two other previous long-term relationships. Her two ex-boyfriends were totally abusive to her. She dropped out of college when she was dating her recent ex-boyfriend, partly because she got hanged up on drugs. Her parents had to do an intervention for her, and we met when she was completing her rehab. Her parents really liked me because they thought I was a positive influence in her life, and she also felt like she owes it to her parents to make up for all the times she disappointed them. I didn't go to a four-year college, but I went to a trade school as an electrician, and I'm currently on a three-year apprenticeship program. Three months after she moved into my apartment, everything was fine. Bedroom life was great. Then she told me that she was pregnant, which was unexpected because she was supposed to be on the pill. We weren't expecting to start a family at the time because we were hoping to get married in a few months and I haven't finished my apprenticeship program yet. So it was an extra burden for us. At the time when she got pregnant, she was working as a cashier for a local Walmart. We decided to postpone the wedding till the baby was delivered as we were not financially stable and I was really busy. So we didn't want to overburden ourselves. Fast forward seven months before she gave birth, our relationship was going strong and we decided that it's best she stop working until after the baby is delivered. When she gave birth to my son, it was the happiest moment of my life. It's really hard to explain. As a father, I have this overwhelming desire to make sure that my son is well taken care of and I was still working as an apprentice and took on a second job to supplement our income. Few months after my fiance gave birth to our son, we had a party to celebrate and most of our co-workers came, mostly women. At first, I thought she would only invite her female co-workers, but two of her male co-workers showed up as well. I am not sure why I thought that, maybe because I had this idea that it was a women thing. I didn't think much of it. I mean, I work with females too and most of our dispatchers at work are female and I am friendly with them, but I wouldn't invite them to any social gathering. But like I said, I didn't give much thought to it at the time. I thought the only two guys that showed up were cool and we had some good conversation and they even made me feel at ease as we talked about guy stuff since most of the guests were women. Six weeks after the birth of our son, my wife started working part-time because she enjoys hanging out with her work buddies and I was always working. Luckily, her parents lived few miles away from us so they were able to babysit for us. Three weeks after my fiancé started back her work, we rescheduled our wedding three months after. My fiancé picked up an extra shift and I continued to work two jobs as we tried to save up for the marriage plus we have an extra mouth to feed. I thought my fiancé was working really hard and I was proud of her, especially since she didn't have to work that hard because my two job and her part-time job was providing more than enough for us. She also complained that she was feeling bored at home with our son, which was surprising to me since he was barely three months old. Her parents are always happy to babysit for us because they work from home. We were both working two jobs at the time. My second job was in the evening, generally from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. and maybe some overtime and stayed later most of the time, trying to save up for the wedding. My fiancé was working the retail at the time. 
and it wasn't uncommon for the team of people to go to the pub in the mall or to the club across the street. For full disclosure, I probably didn't like her going out at the time, since we have a newborn, and the area that we are living in is somewhat sketchy. I remember coming home from work and didn't see her and our son at the apartment, and she didn't tell me that she would be out that night. So I assumed that her parents were taking care of the baby and she was out that night with her friends. She must be hanging out with her friends, I thought. So I drove up to the club to surprise her. And to my surprise, she wasn't there. Her drunk co-workers were there. And they were like, she was just here. But I saw her take off with Matthew. Matthew was one of the guys that showed up at my fiancé's party. I think my heart sunk right there. So I drove over to the restaurant where people would go to, and she wasn't there. I started driving behind Ophix Parks in the area, and after 10 minutes of frantically searching for her, I saw a car that looked like hers parked next to another car on the street. I drove past the car that I thought was hers, since the street was a one-way street, so I couldn't make a U-turn on that street. So I decided to make a turn on another street to park behind her car and check it out. I parked a few feet behind her car, opened my driver's door and started walking towards her car to take a closer look. As I was approaching, I noticed that someone was on the back seat because it looked like someone keeps moving their head up and down. It seemed very strange to me so I proceeded with caution. The closer I get, the more I noticed that the car was shaking. My heart immediately dropped as I was sure that someone was going at it at the back of my wife's car. As soon as I got closer to the car, I took a peek through the back seat side window as I saw Matthew on top of my wife, both fully unclothed going at it. They didn't even notice that I was staring right at them till I startled them when I started banging on the right side passenger window glass as they struggled to find their clothes. I immediately checked to see if the back seat right door was open. Luckily it was, and I opened the door and dragged Matthew out of the car as he struggled to put his boxers on. Chaos ensues. I didn't allow him to put back his shorts. I punch him continuously on his face as he punches me back and we got into a fight. He was mostly trying to get away because he had nothing on. I took that chance to make sure that he pays for my frustration as I continue to punch him as he struggles to find his keys. He only got the opportunity to run away because my fiance, now wearing only her bra and undies, came around and started holding me back. My fiancé was saying that, and I quote, It's not what he seems. It was just a mistake. You are going to kill him. He's just a friend. Close quote. It took me a while to cool off, and I don't remember much of what happened at that point because I was seeing red. My fiancé and I went to our apartment in separate cars. When we got home, I demanded an explanation, but all I heard was sorry I was drinking. I didn't know what I was doing, and it would never happen again, and she also said that she was going to quit her job. I told her that she should pack her things, and she's not staying here that night. Since my son was at her parents' house, I told her to go there and stay for the night. After she left, I couldn't really sleep that night. I was emotionally and physically exhausted. It was then that I noticed that my fist was bleeding and I had several scratches and bruises. Before my wife left that night, she kept saying that it was just a one-time thing, and it just happened. And I continued to play that as I lay on my bed that night. I knew that our relationship is over. There is no need for me to be sleeping five hours every day, working two jobs to pay off for a wedding. The following day, my fiancé came over and we talked. I forgot most of the detail of what we said in the conversation, but I'm like, if nothing else happened between you and this guy, then swear on our son's life. She's like, no. And I'm like, it's just a silly thing, just do it. It just seemed weird that her and this guy were pretty much in their birthday suit and it was just a one-time thing. She swears up and down that it was a one-time thing. 
And after telling her that our relationship would be over if she continues to lie, that was when she started confessing. She said that there was a time before in our apartment. I think my heart sank as I have known it deep down, but now hearing it is different. She told me that it was a few days before I caught them. They were at the club and she was worried that he couldn't drive home. So she invited him over to sober up. She said they were in the kitchen and he was getting some water and he walked up on her and told her that he loved her and started kissing her and they proceeded to our couch. She's swearing up and down that they didn't have sex, which I find it hard to believe since she felt comfortable in a public area in the car, but your moral compass was okay having me sit on the couch or lie in the bed that you and your partner are screwed around on. She claimed that she was on the verge of breaking up with him that day that I caught them. The guy knew who I was and always acting like buddy when I swing by at her job. My feeling is that this was a physical and emotional affair that lasted for a few months and I believe that they hooked up more than two times that I know about, but she's taken it to the grave with her. She started screaming when I told her that the wedding is cancelled. I was taken aback by her reaction because it came as a surprise to her. That made me think that she must have been having the affair for so long that she had become numb to it and didn't understand the consequences if she gets caught. I wanted to separate from her but we still have a three months old son whom I love very much. I was so lost and confused as I didn't want to kick her out since our son was still so young and I wanted to be around him. I wouldn't want to work on our relationship if it wasn't for my son. I would have kicked her to the curb once and for all. My now ex fiance quits her retail job and tried to convince me that we should work on our relationship since we live in a two-bedroom apartment. She was sleeping on the other room with my son as I refused to sleep with her. I also quit my other job and focused on my apprenticeship. I was intentionally making myself scars and not coming home. I felt like I was having a mental breakdown. I was having mood swings. One minute I'm going about my business and the next minute I'm crying. About a week after D-Day, my boss, whom I was close with, called me and asked me what was going on and that I've been acting differently for the past week. I broke down to him and started crying, which was uncharacteristic of me. I told him everything and that I was stuck with my ex fiance because of my son and I have no way out. My boss was in his late 50s and I've been through two divorces and is now single. He mentioned something that really angered and shocked me. He told me that I should get a DNA test on my son just to make sure that he is mine. And if he wasn't mine, then I'll be off the hook. For a minute there, I was angry that he would even make that suggestion because I was sure that my son was biologically mine. But the more I think about it, the clearer it became. The unexpected pregnancy Matthew showing up at the baby party, my fiance picking up extra shift at work, working hard. I took it upon myself to get a DNA test on my son. It was very difficult to do emotionally. I really wanted him to be my son. But two weeks later, I got back the result and he wasn't mine. It was a bittersweet moment for me. On one hand, I have freed myself from this lying cheater. And on the other hand, I felt bad for the boy that I have called my son and loved for more than three months. I shared the DNA result with my girlfriend and she claimed that the DNA result was fake and that he's my son and my name is in his birth certificate. I told her that we can redo the DNA test if she wants, but the son that I have been raising right from when he was in her womb is not mine and I want her to pack her stuff and leave my apartment. She refused till I threatened to post the result on Facebook. I knew she was worried of what her parents would think of her and she was more scared that she had disappointed her parents more than anything. She later confessed that she has been cheating on me throughout our relationship 
even when she was pregnant and home alone. I wanted to get more information about the timeline and if there were more than one man that she was having an affair with, but I didn't have the stomach for that. I just wanted her gone from my life. I think one of the things that ate away at me is what was going to be our end game if I hadn't come back from work that night and didn't hop into bed instead of going out to see her at the club. I find it hard to believe that she was on the verge of breaking up with him since I found her having sex with him in her car. How long would this have gone on behind my back? I feel a long time. She claimed that she was going to tell him that night that she didn't want to see him anymore. What? She couldn't have done that outside the club? I wonder if she would have kept it up even after our wedding. There was no reason to quit cheating. It was really tough helping her move as she cried the entire time. At that time, she hadn't told her parents yet and she asked me not to. Why I was helping her move, I almost fell for her tears. But I had to remind myself that this woman led me on and wasted almost two years of my life. The saddest part was kissing my son for the last time. I was crying and wasn't afraid to show it. I wanted her to see how deep she had cut me. Fast forward to this day and the memory still haunts me. I really feel bad for the child because as it turns out, Matthew was the father and he had several baby mamas as well. I also found out that my ex fiance lied to her parents and told them that I was a deadbeat dad that abandoned his son. I had a close relationship with her father at the time. So he called me and I told him the truth. I don't know the fallout between her and her parents, but the last time I heard she was living alone as a single mom. Also, she can't stand Matthew and didn't want anything to do with him. Even though this still hurts me to this day, I am very happy the way things went down the way it is because I was able to not end up with a cheater and not raise another man's son.